for all of us. It's about predicting where the consumer is going and getting half of it right. One of the things we want to do is create ads that don't suck. Embracing change creates great possibility. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today. Today's show is recorded at the Brand Marketing Summit in San Francisco. In this episode, we hear from four brand marketers about what's their challenge today for their brand, how they're thinking about evolving the customer journey or experience, how they're amplifying their efforts, new things that they're trying, as well as key takeaways from the summit that we're at here in San Francisco. First up is Ali Oseki, VP of Marketing at Greg Norman Company, then followed by Andrew Strickman, Senior Vice President Brand and Creative for Realtor.com and Move Incorporated. Then David Fossis, Senior Director of Brand at WP Engine, and followed finally by Smita Wadhawan, Senior Director of US Marketing at GoDaddy. I hope you enjoy this lightning round with four very interesting marketers from different companies. Enjoy the show. Ali Frost Oseki at the Greg Norman Company. I head up marketing there. Great. So we're here at the Brand Summit in San Francisco. What's top of mind for your brand these days? Well, Greg Norman Company is almost acts like a holding company. So we have a few companies across the board from a direct-to-consumer, apparel, wine, eyewear, and some of our businesses are B2B. So golf course design, real estate, and we just launched a new product actually in the golf industry called Shark Experience. So with all of those companies underneath the Greg Norman Company umbrella, it's really figuring out what synergies that we can develop from a functional perspective. So platforms we can use, pulling together marketing budgets, and then from a brand perspective, just making sure the messaging and creative for all of our companies really ladder up to our bigger kind of brand purpose and brand messaging. Okay. And what was that shark experience? Tell me a little bit. Shark experience. So, so it is, if Similar, the best analogy is if you're sitting on an airplane and there's a TV screen in front of you and you can listen to music, watch shows. We are bringing that to the golf cart. Oh, so wow. okay. yeah, so some people will hopefully <laughs> love it. Uh, you can stream music through Slack or radio. You can listen to music via Bluetooth. There are also some golfer specific features. So GPS yardage, things like that. And we just signed a partnership with PGA Tour Live. So you can be watching the, I think it's, the memorial this weekend, but you can be watching it while playing golf. Very cool. Very cool. We're talking about experience on this one. So how are you thinking about customer, the customer journey or customer experience these days? Yeah. So the easy one for us is talking about shark experience, or I guess not easy, but the one most top of mind is how do we reach a golfer before they get to the golf course? How do we reach them on the course? How do we, you know, communicate to them after the course? And, you know, how do we talk to them in the right way at the right time? And also, you know, we don't own the space at the course. So really, how do we work with course owners? to make sure that the whole experience is seamless. What's next and how you're trying to amplify your efforts or your message? So I listened to the CMO of Levi's today yeah. and actually Nat Geo too had these amazing stories. And, you know, I kept hitting my head. We've been talking about this a lot in the office. We get write-ins from fans saying, wow, I remember when I was nine years old and Greg Norman came over and, you know, kind of helped me envision my career in golf and things like that. And just these amazing write-in stories. And how do we capture these and how do we build in stories and testimonials and not necessarily make it a campaign, but really just integrate it into our entire brand and what we do. Nice. You just talked about one of the speakers at the summit. Was there a key insight today that you've taken away? And we still got a whole nother day to go. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, consumer data, customer journey, putting those two things together. How do you do it right? And from a reassuring way, I feel like no one's really nailed it. So I feel a lot more comfortable after hearing everyone's perspective to say, hey, there's, you know, we're all trying, you know, there's no silver bullet, but trying to figure it out. Interesting. So more on the personal side, is there a best piece of advice you've gotten in your career? So listen more and talk less. <laughs> so I think when you're kind of younger in your career, you're anxious to, you know, speak your voice and sit in a meeting and make sure you're heard. And I, you know, still do that when appropriate, but I really learned to listen more. And actually Greg has given me, or he's talked about his best piece of advice he got that I also agree with is always ask questions. So depending on, doesn't matter who you're with, ask questions. My favorite is someone successful, ask them what was their greatest failure, right? So it's, you always, I think, get the best answer. 
Nice. Where do you go for information these days? There's so much bombarding us. So I'm kind of a geek. Fortune has a newsletter called The Term Sheet. So they it basically lists, you know, anywhere from established companies to startups and different investments, IPOs, and really is the convergence between brands and whether VCs or private equity firms. And I say I geek out because I always wonder, like, what is that brand doing? Why did they invest? You know, what's the value proposition? How are they unique? And yeah, I geek out over it. I read it. <laughs> I've got to start. I'm sub- not good at reading newsletters every day, but that's the one I read every day. I got to subscribe to that one. Yeah, it's really good. So last fun question. One thing you love and one thing you hate. I love oh, uh, rainbow sprinkles. In a professional <laughs> realm, I received a text from... One member of my team who said, wow, you know, you always make us do X, Y, and Z and build these decks. And, you know, I always kind of complained about it, never understood why. And she texted me one day I was traveling and she was like, oh, my God, I get it. I know why you make me do this. And I love it. And it's made me more analytical. And yeah, I was like, well, I I actually sent it to my mom (laughs) 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 to make her proud of me. Yes. (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome. One thing you hate? Is there anything you hate? Or you wish people would stop doing maybe? I'm not a fan of people that lack self-awareness. Oh, yeah. That would probably be. And also, I hate driving a car. (laughs) So I would sign up for an Uber annual membership if they offered one. And I hope they do someday. Yeah, Yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, uh, Allie, thank you for coming on the show. Great. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having me. I'm Andrew Strickman. I head up brand and creative at Realtor.com. Been at the company for about five and a half years. And my areas of responsibility are brand marketing, brand management for our parent company, and creative services. Great. What's uh, top of mind for Realtor.com these days? Well, I think the top of mind for the company is continued growth and increasing revenue. Top of mind for me and my role is increasing our brand awareness, both total awareness as well as unaided awareness and brand clarity, meaning if someone's aware of us, do they actually know who we are and what we do? Gotcha. Gotcha. And how are you thinking about the customer experience or customer journey today? Again, sort of in in my role, the consumer experience is about finding relevance in who we are and what we represent and how we can help them. Our goal is to be the place that every consumer who's in the market to buy or sell a home, our goal is that they start with Realtor.com. We have one of the most comprehensive sets of real estate listing data in the country. Nearly 100% of MLS listed for sale homes. And making sure that when someone is ready to purchase a home, they come to us first and use our product, both our website and our app, is sort of at the pinnacle of my objectives at any given time. Gotcha. What's next in how to amplify your efforts or your message? Are you trying anything new these days? There's definitely a component of the tried and true. We've been an always on television advertiser for about five years. Digital has been a big part of what we do as well. Primarily video advertising, both creating brand oriented content as well as traditional advertising advertising in quotes. But over the last couple of years, we've also been exploring and investing a fair amount of time and resource into partnerships, partnerships that are relevant to our audience, but also partnerships that bring our brand to new audiences in relevant and and sort of credible ways. We have a partnership with the Golden State Warriors that is entering its third year. And a big component of that is video content that we create with the team and with players, as well as with Golden State Warriors fans. We have an ongoing media partnership with Money Magazine. We were the first external data source to contribute to their Best Places to Live franchise last year, and we're going to hopefully continue that in the coming year. And then we just launched a partnership with Cirque du Soleil. Wow. Yeah, sort of... (laughs) You know, first blush, you'd think it was sort of crazy and strange and and bizarre, but actually about 50% of Cirque's U.S. audience is not currently our audience. And so being able to create content related to home and what home means, especially for touring artists that are on the road 30, 40 weeks out of the year, is a way for us to create a credible connection with a brand like Cirque du Soleil and also reach their audience, which we hope will become our audience. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I was in your session earlier today and I saw the video with the Golden State Warriors. With Draymond player. Green, yeah. Yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah, he's a tremendous personality. And I think that people who don't know him 
at any more than what they see on the court. I mean, he's a very aggressive, loud player, right? But he's a teddy bear, honestly. I mean, he leaves everything on the court (laughs) and, you know, off the court. He was just so much fun. He really loved the idea of playing around and being sort of in disguise. And yeah, I'm sure that a lot of the consumers who came in that front door already knew who he was, (laughs) but they played along with the joke and the reveal was great. So that's awesome. What's one key insight so far from the summit? I know we still got another day to go. But that's a good question. I think that it actually came out of a session uh, a couple of sessions ago, which is that, you know, brands that are going to win and they're trying to reach consumers should really be representative of why they're a brand to begin with, as opposed to what they have to offer or what they have to sell. If they can draw a connection between their purpose, not that every brand has to be purpose driven, but their purpose and the consumer, they will succeed. Great. Best of piece of advice you've ever gotten in your career? Tell great stories. <laughs> yeah, tell That's great stories. One. And it's, it's, you know, something I've been trying to do for a very long time. So I started my career as a journalist and got into marketing about 15, 16 years ago. And hopefully I'm continuing to tell great stories. I think journalists make great marketers. I have to say, I interview a lot and those that have journalist backgrounds stick out actually. Thank you. So best source of information. We're bombarded by information these days. Yeah, you know, I... <laughs> Depends on what the information is for. I'm a rabid consumer of information. I think you have to be these days. I think Twitter is a little bit of an echo chamber, but it's still a decent news source, especially after Facebook changed their algorithm and deprioritized news organizations in your newsfeed. But, you know, I read a lot. I talk to people a lot. I'm constantly just thinking about stuff. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. That's great. So uh, one last fun question. Is there, you know, one thing you love and one thing you hate? There's lots of things that I love, but to go with your mechanic here, I love spaghetti and meatballs (laughs) and I hate beets. Uh, Nice. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Hate's a strong word, but I definitely hate beets. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Well, Andrew, thank you for coming on the show today. Absolutely. Hi, I'm David Fossis. I'm the Senior Director of Brand at WP Engine. Great. And uh, tell me what WP Engine is. So WP Engine is a digital experience platform. We power sites that are built on WordPress, make them enterprise grade, make them highly scalable, and make it really easy for enterprises to be able to launch sites fast. Great. So what's top of mind for your brand today, WP Engine? So what's top of mind for us is really how do you break through in a market that's so cluttered? For us, especially as a digital experience platform, we have to be the showcase for the best experiences online. So how do we do that through our own website and be representative of the possibilities and and what you can actually build on our own platform? And then how do you break through and get that to the audiences that we want, the enterprise brands, the agencies that are creating those experiences? Got it. And how are you thinking about customer journey or the customer experience these days? Sure. So it's really important for us to try to figure out personalization. And I think that's really key for all brands. And what's really clear is that there's no real out of the box solution for that. Every company, every brand is really going to have to invest in building that technology themselves so that we really can get to a point where we're offering more custom content and information that's really relevant to the user that comes to your website or that you engage with in other channels as well. Okay. And what's next and how you're trying to amplify your efforts or your message and get it out there? Are you experimenting with anything? Sure. I mean, we're a growth stage company. So really, we've started with the foundation, kind of the basics over the last several years. And we're now getting to the point where we can say, all right, what do we do besides kind of performance marketing around digital and social? What are the right events that we want to get to? So So we can really engage those brands and agencies that we want to speak to and looking at kind of outside opportunities, you know, again, outside of kind of performance marketing where we can reach our audiences in a kind of unique way. Got it. What's been uh, one key insight from the summit today? I know we still have a whole nother day to go. So, but anything that struck you today? Yeah, I think one of the key themes that came out of the summit today was this notion of authenticity. It was certainly something that came out of the research that we saw as far as Gen Z's expectations and really broadly different generations' expectations of of the web. But you saw that with the CMO of Levi's. You saw that with Farmers Insurance. You saw that with National Geographic. All of them were really talking about how do you create this authentic voice for the brand and really make it something that resonates with your audiences. And so I think that's something that that brands are really going to have to focus in on is how do you be authentic and resonate with your audiences? Yeah. I saw your session today and I honestly didn't realize how 
wide the millennial age range was. Right. Because I think I'm technically a millennial. I always thought I was a Gen X. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, uh, same here. I was kind of thought I was on the cusp. And there's some people out there that would say, you know, I'm an exennial because I'm right there yeah. on the cusp. And so I always thought I was there. But based on on this research, I'm I'm a millennial. I gotta, <laughs> you know, I say ashamedly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Every time I see something I don't understand, I go, oh, millennials. Uh, yeah. But I'm one now, yeah. so I got to change my act. <laughs> best piece of advice you've ever received? So I think the, the best piece of advice I ever received was actually, it was shared by uh, an executive who was quoting Seneca, Greek philosopher that said, uh, you know, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. And for me, that has always resonated that you never know what opportunities are around the corner, especially with the pace of business today. And so you've always got to be preparing. You've got to be in kind of in a stage of continuous learning so that when those opportunities arise, you're prepared for them. You can take advantage of them. I love it. I love it. And I need to get into Seneca more. I've heard it from other podcasters out there. So I need to double down. Yeah. Do my research. <laughs> so best source of information today. We're bombarded by information from all over the place, but where do you go to? Yeah, for this one I actually I tend to go traditional. And Wall Street Journal is kind of my core source for news. I kind of start there. It's the app that I open in the morning. And then after that I start to check, you know, Twitter and my blog feed and things like that. But Wall Street Journal is kind of that one true north that I have. Same here. So uh, last question, a little bit of a fun one. Uh, one thing you love, one thing you hate. You know, I think to keep it to, you know, business oriented, I love building brands, you know, and I think that it's such an interesting time to be doing that. Brands are facing so much change and it's, you know, kind of uncharted territory in, in a lot of ways. And so for me, I'm kind of a kid in a candy store when I get to go, at an earlier stage of a company like a WP Engine and get to go kind of define the brand and go really help it resonate in the marketplace. That, that's just a lot of fun for me. Got it. One thing you hate? I'll pick on generations, actually. Yeah, sure. I hate that people don't pick up the phone anymore. Mm. You know, I think people rely way too much on email and chat and things like that for things that could be taken care of in a two-minute call ends up being something that gets strung out in uh, communications. And so I would love to you know, oddly enough, I'd love for my phone to ring a little bit more. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Smitha Budhavan, Senior Director of GoDaddy uh, Marketing. Okay, great. So what's top of mind for GoDaddy these days? Mm -hmm. What do you focus so, on? So as a brand, if you think about GoDaddy, we have a very high brand awareness for the domain and hosting category, but we want to expand that story and that narrative to talk more about not just domains, but all the tools and help that we provide to small business owners to help them succeed online. So we are consciously moving the brand narrative to expand in that space with email, website, domain name, everything that we provide to our small business owners to succeed. So that's kind of one thing that's definitely top of mind for us. And if you kind of think about the Danica campaign that we have out right now, we are sharing that story with the transition Danica is making from being a race car driver to now being a full-time small business owner. So with this campaign, we are focusing on her think next with her ventures and showing how GoDaddy's product and services are helping her with making that transition in her career. Interesting. GoDaddy does, has a lot of products and services. How do you think about the customer experience or customer journey? This is actually a very timely question because we are transitioning into becoming a very customer experience company. The way we've been thinking about this is instead of selling standalone products to our customers, right, and having them come to the website, figure out, I want a domain, do I want this, do I want that? We are trying to package everything up into a solution for our customers. So if you are a company that's making beanie babies, you could potentially start with a domain name on GoDaddy create a website with a Go Central website builder product, which is very easy. In under an hour, you could get your website up and running. And we could also help you sell those items, right? Because we have e-commerce capability in our online store version of the website. So you could literally sell products right there. And then if you wanted to communicate with your customers, we have email marketing. So it's everything that you need in terms of managing your business and transforming your idea into reality. Okay, nice. And what's next and how you're trying to amplify your efforts or your message? There's been a lot of talk at the summit about influencers in their marketing efforts. You obviously have celebrities in your advertising. Is there anything else that you're experimenting with or, or think might be fruitful in the future? 
Yeah, so we as a brand have really relied on television to get the word out. And we all know that television is kind of slowly going down. We have been experimenting with new channels, especially in the social and digital space. And as we kind of think about, so there will, there will be more experiments that we will continue to do. Uh, but right now, I would say it's, it's definitely at the experimentation stage where we are slowly testing and learning while sticking to the basics of what works. So it's a test and learn approach and kind of figuring that out as we expand a channel mix. Okay. I think you've been here a short time, but is there a key takeaway you've taken away from the summit today? So what I really liked was, one, I really enjoyed the Mozilla presentation, Mozilla presentation today, because I thought the, as marketers, we always think about data and we are kind of greedy of wanting more data because it makes us successful with our campaigns. It was interesting to kind of think about it from a different perspective, right? Think about it eventually from the lens that if you want to win your consumer's trust, then there has to be, there's a trade-off, right? There's a trade-off between how much data you are collecting, right? And how much you're using that data to target them versus building that trust because you don't want to be creepy. So I thought that was interesting perspective as a marketer. Then the Facebook presentation was, again, super interesting because as an organization, especially GoDaddy, we have tended to stick a lot with television. We've been very successful with television. So it's kind of interesting to see how even within sticking to our traditional media, we can start thinking a bit more mobile first and kind of start thinking about those experiences and testing some of those formats that we saw in the Facebook presentation today. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the opportunities that that brings to, to us as a brand. That's great. Share any best advice you've gotten along the way in your career. So I would say the best advice I've got is whatever you do, just put your heart into it. It could be small, really small. You might be not, you might not be clear why you're working on that thing. It might seem inconsequential, but it all adds up and it eventually does lead to you doing big things as long as you put your heart into it. So I would say commitment and putting your heart into what you do is probably the biggest, best advice I got. It's great advice. We're bombarded by information these days. Is there a source or a best source of information that you go to kind of learn and keep relevant? I read a lot of information on the marketing website. So I would say the regular ones would probably be Ad Week and Ad Age, right? Just uh, staying connected there. Brand Channel is probably another source where I kind of frequently go to for information. And then Think with Google is another one which I really like because it's an interesting perspective. I kind of feel that some of the traditional publications do a good job with brand and traditional media, whereas Google kind of pushes the boundary a little bit more on the digital and the mobile side. So it's kind of interesting to stay connected and learn what's happening more in the evolution there. Great. Last question, a little fun one, I hope. One thing you love and one thing you hate. What I love personally is spending time with my five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> what I hate is, it's interesting. I wouldn't say I hate it, but it's parenting is challenging for, oh, yes. for all of us who, who have kids. There is a dimension of parenting that we love and there's a dimension of parenting that we hate, right? Yeah. So I think it's a combination, like love and hate at <laughs> the same time, where there's some things you love about being a parent and some that you don't. I totally agree. Well, thank you for spending some time with me. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun, Alan. Thank you. Marketing Today is brought to you by Atomic. Atomic focuses on unleashing the growth potential for clients we serve. Atomic is a strategic consultancy specializing in business, marketing, brand, and innovation. Our singular goal is to help you accelerate your efforts with the right mix of expertise, analysis, and creativity. Check us out at atomic.com. A-T-O-M-C-K dot com. Hi, it's Alan again. Marketing Today was created and produced by me, with writing and editing by Kevin Greeley, social media support by Megan Woods, art and graphic design by Sarah Dell. If you're new to Marketing Today, please feel free to write us a review on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends and colleagues about the show. I love to hear from listeners, and you can contact me at marketingtodaypodcast.com. There you'll also find complete show notes with links to anything we talk about on any episode. You can also search our archives. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today.